All right, in this video, we're going to be walking through creating an example form. It's going to be a multi-step form, and we're going to conditionally hide and show different values on the form based on what the user answered. And then after, we're going to be doing a deep dive into some of the fields on the form builder and going over every option to explain how they work and what it does. So let's get started. So first, I want you to navigate to the database and then click on Forms. From here, you can click on Create Form. This is going to launch the form builder where you can start dragging and dropping different fields. So for this example, I actually want to click on multi-page wizard form. This is going to break up my questions into multiple pages so users you know, aren't intimidated by this super long form all on one page. So at the top, you can see I'm, I'm already given a page one. I can go ahead and click on plus page to add additional pages to my form. Um, and it's going to show me which page I'm editing as I switch between them. So the first thing I might want to do on my page one is actually change the name of it. So I would hover over this and click on the settings gear. On here, I can give this a title. And I can go ahead and change some of the information that's going to show on this form. So let me show you an example. There is a breadcrumb you can show, which is like a status bar or a progress bar you can show on the top of the form. I personally like to use the progress bar so it shows you know, where they are throughout the, uh, the form process. Um, you can also disable the user from clicking on that. So the progress bar can be clickable where I could click ahead to step two to maybe see what's on the next page, or I can turn that off. Maybe I don't want someone to be able to skip to the next page. Um, and in fact, I may not even want them to go to the previous page, right? So I can disable these buttons. Maybe I only want to give the user the option to go to the next page. So I can check these options here. I can go ahead and click Save. Now I'm happy with this page. So let's start adding a layout to this. So I like to use the columns, uh, but there is a trick to using the columns. So and I'll give you an example. So let's say I had two columns here and I start dragging in some fields. I got a first name, a last name, an email, and a phone. So by default, the way these columns respond on a mobile device is it's gonna show the left column on top of the right column. So if you end up looking at this form on a mobile device, it would actually read as first name, email, last name, phone. And that isn't very intuitive. So what I like to do is I like to use multiple rows of columns. So I'm gonna delete these really quick. So I have one column here, and I'm gonna add another column below it. And I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna put in my email and my phone. So now when this is on mobile view, someone's on their mobile device, it's gonna read as first name, last name, email, phone, right? Because we have the left column on top of the right, and then the left column on top of the right. So it's gonna be much more intuitive for your mobile users. So now that I got my form fields on here, another common thing you wanna do is you wanna make some fields required. By default, none of these fields are required. So you can hover over the settings gear, and you can go down to validation, and you can check to make it required. Now you'll notice I have the little red star next to the field name, letting the user that this field is required. So I'm happy with this first page. Let's go ahead and start with the next page. Here, I'm also gonna to wanna to check the page settings and give the page a name. So I'm gonna click on the settings gear. I'm gonna have this, the questions page. And I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna set the breadcrumb to the progress bar. And I'm gonna say they can't click on the progress bar and they can't go back and they can't cancel. They can only go next. So let's go ahead and click Save. And just to give you a quick preview of what this looks like so far, I can go ahead and save this form. And I'll give this a name. I can leave the default name, click Save. And now I have this preview link up here on the right. So I can click on that and open the form. And so this is the progress bar that I was talking about. So I'm on step one of three because I have three pages on my form. So now I'm gonna go back into the form designer. This is my second page and I wanna put something different in here. 
So let's go ahead and explore some of the basic fields that we have. So I may want to do a radio. Now, a radio are those multiple choice questions that you typically see on a website. So I can come in here, I can click on this, and we'll give this a name. How was your day? And so that's what's going to display uh, as the question for the user. Now under data, we can come in and we can specify options in here. So we can say great, okay, and super. Right, so now we have three options that the user can pick. This is what displays to the user, and this is what what's, uh, gets saved on the back end in the database. So it's basically just the lowercase version of what you typed in. And so I can click Save, and this is going to be important to us later because this is the value we're going to make our condition on. So I'm going to save this, and now I got my question. Now let's say if someone said their day was only okay and it wasn't super or great, I want to ask them why. How could your day be super? Right? And so for that, maybe I want to use a text area. And on this text area, I can go ahead and click Settings, and we can say, why was your day just OK? And so now I got this nice text area box where the user can type in uh, a long answer. But I can also come in here and customize this. So it defaults to three rows, but maybe I want 10 rows. Right? This can be a really large box or a little bit less. So I'll make that five. That looks good. So now what I want to do is when someone clicks OK, I want to show this form. Or when someone clicks Great and Super, I want to hide this form. So you can do that either way. But let's go ahead and click on the settings. So let's say I want to show this when they click on OK. So I'm going to go under Conditional, and I'm going to say this component should display True, which means yes when the form component, and I'll search in here for how was your day, has the value OK. Right, so I can set that here. So this is going to display true or yes when it has the value OK. So that will work as long as we hide this field by default. Right, so I want to set this to hidden so it doesn't display. And now we have this condition that will change it to display when the person answered OK. So I can go ahead and click Save. And I'm going to save this form. And I'm going to go ahead and click on the preview link. And we're going to see how that looks. So I'm going to type in a first name here. I'm going to go to the next page. So if I click Great, I shouldn't see anything. And if I click OK, now you see this additional question asked. And so this is an easy way to be able to hide and show a single question. But sometimes you want to hide and show a group of questions. right? So let's go ahead and do that example. So instead of having just one question here, I might use the layout component. And so the layout component has a few different things that can group your fields. So I'm going to show you a couple of examples. We have a well, we have a panel, and then we have a field set. And so these are almost the exact same component. It's just a slightly different look and feel to the user. So if you look at the field set, for example, this is not going to have any border or background. This is just a white box for a field. And so we can go ahead and put something in here. I'm going to put something in each one of these, and we're just going to save it and preview it so you can see what the difference is. So I'm going to click Save. Let's preview my form again. I'm going to fill this out. And so here you can see the difference. Right? The field set doesn't have any styling around it. It's just grouping up your items into one set we'll be able to use later. The panel is just showing us that you know this is a different subset of information. It has a little title um, that you can customize. And then the last one 
just kind of gives you that border with the background around it. So this is useful if you want to give a hint to your user, you know, maybe this information is related, right? You could be asking the person, do you rent a home or do you own a home? And if they say rent, you might have this grouped into a, uh, this box so they know that this is information about the rental. You know, how much do you pay for rent? Uh, what day do you pay your rent? How long have you been renting? That sort of thing. So this can be just useful from a user experience uh, perspective to kind of give them a hint on, on what this is related to. Um, so in this example, what I can do is I'm going to use the one with the gray background. So I'm going to delete the panel and we'll go ahead and delete this one too. And so now what I want to do is when someone says their day was okay, I want to not only show this question, I want to show other questions. And so for that, I can go ahead and let's do a survey. So we have this survey element here. And so when I drag this by default, there's no questions in the survey. I have to click on the settings gear and I can go ahead and customize the label if I want, or I can go to the data tab and start adding the questions. So the questions for the survey could be like, how, let's see, how was the service? How was the weather? Right, so you can add multiple questions here. And then the values, this is gonna be the columns on the top. We can say, okay, great, and super. All right, and so you can add as many as you want in here. And I'm just gonna go ahead and click save. And so now what I wanna do is I wanna hide and show this box with the two questions in it if someone clicks okay. So for that, we're gonna do the same thing we did earlier. I'm gonna go to the box, I'm gonna click the settings gear, and I'm gonna say, let's hide this by default, but conditionally, let's go ahead and show this when the form component, how was your day, has the value okay. So that's perfect. I can go ahead and save this. It says label is required. So we can just call this the uh, uh, survey group. And so now this whole survey group is going to hide and show when that's okay. So let's go ahead and save that. Now I'm gonna preview this again. I'm gonna fill this out. Right, so if I click on great, I click on super, I don't see anything, I'm gonna click on okay, and now I got this, this uh, field set here. Um, so that's really great to initially hide and show different questions. Um, now these questions do not have to be on the same step of the form. So I could do that same condition. These, this group could be on a different step on the form. So you can do that as well. So let's dive back into the, the form designer. So we just went over you know, how you can create some really custom logic on your, your forms. And it's a great way to capture all the data that you need from your customers. Now let's go ahead and start on page three. And we're gonna go ahead and start diving into a lot more of the advanced settings in here. And so let's start with the layout. So on the layout elements, um, we do have the content element. Now this is gonna be the thing that you see on your page by default, right? This is that heading text that you get. So you could add in some uh, text in here, format it. You might put in a video giving the user instructions on how to use the form. But again, if you're gonna be using this form on a website, I really don't recommend um, using this because the styling options you have on here just aren't the same as the web designer. So web designer, you can you know, change the fonts and the colors and everything you, you can think of. Um, so, um, but if you're just gonna be using the form generated links, like what we're doing in this demo, you know, then you can use this. Um, so that's what you can do on this one. But we also have the HTML element. So if you're doing any sort of advanced tracking, you could have a Google Analytics tag on this form. You can have a Facebook pixel on this form. You can have any sort of custom HTML, CSS, or JavaScript. 
you'll be able to paste that in here. Um, so that's really useful. Now columns, we already went over. Field set we went over, panel we went over. Table is new. So table is gonna function very similar to columns, except you'll have multiple rows in here. So you can come in here and edit this and specify how many rows and columns that you want. Um, so you can use that in here. Um, you can also specify the border on here if you want it to be striped. So alternating colors, gray, white, gray. You can have a border around it um, and you can kind of mess with the other options as well. So let's go ahead and delete that one. And now tabs. Tabs are a great way to organize your questions as well. So you may have, for example, um, you know, tell me about the, the, the last five jobs that you've had. And you might have five different tabs in here, job one, job two, or you know, by year. You can create different tabs on here to have different groups of questions. So this one's really powerful as well. You can come in here and click edit and just add a new tab. Right, and save that. And now I can start dragging different things onto each tab. And now let's start diving into some of the fields under the advanced section. So the advanced section fields, uh, many of them are gonna look very similar and they just have different validation rules to make sure that you're entering in the right information. So for example, if we look at URL, the URL field is going to look very similar to a text box, right? So you can come in here and you can do the same thing. You can customize the label. You can do the validation, turn on the validation, etc. or required. Um, then we have the date and time. So you have a date and time picker. So the user can use the calendar to select a specific date and time. We have the day. This is you know, for just month, day, and year. Then we have time only. We can specify a time and there's a time picker in here as well. We have currency. So this is gonna expect a numeric value. And then we also have a file upload. So you can use this. Um, customers can upload files on your form. This can be any type of file, a PDF, an image, etc. The one thing that you do need to keep in mind that this file upload, each one that you drag onto your form is for one file. So I could have this file right here as upload a photo. And the next one could be, you know, logo. So it would just be one file per item. And so the uploaded forms and the files that are submitted course are visible on the contact on the contact details page so let's go ahead and delete this one the next is billing info so billing info purchase address and shipping they're all related um, and I actually like to use the purchase one because the purchase element has all these other ones built in so it actually is a lot easier if you just drag the purchase element so when you drag this You'll see it has, you know, credit card, it has billing address. I can click on this, double click on this, and I'm going to get the settings over here on the right. So on here, I can specify some of the settings. Let's say I don't want to collect the full billing address. I could do zip code only. I could say do not collect the cardholder name. Maybe I already asked for the name earlier in the form. Um, so you have a lot of different options when you're selling a product or service online. You can kind of customize the data that's important to you. And then you can select up here, I want to sell products. Um, I want to collect donations. I want the user to key in a custom amount, like how much they want to pay. Um, or I just want to collect the credit card only. Maybe you're just getting the credit card on file um, for a future charge. Um, so you can come in here and select one of these options. Now, if you're selling products, um, we're going to do another video on that, uh, selling products, but you'll be able to click on the products tab and select one of the products you have in your system. And you can select one or more, and the user can pick from a list right here. Um, so that's, that's really great. 
And if you do have multiple products, you can also specify if the user can select multiple, if they're all selected by default, or the user can only pick one, like option one or option two. Let's go ahead and delete that one. All right, and so next, we already went over survey. We also have the ability to do signature, right? So you can add a signature widget on here, and just like the others, you can click on settings and you can change the label right here. Um, and you can also specify the width uh, and some other settings. So you might want to change the background color. Now this does use a, like a RGB style code for background color. Um, so if you need help picking that type of color, you, you might want to Google just RGB color picker and you'll be able to find something that, that generates this code for you. But these are you know, numbers that you can uh, enter to manipulate the color. Um, and then you got some other settings on here as well. So we'll go ahead and save that and delete that one. <coughs> and now under basic, this is going to be the basic building blocks that you can use to build your own custom form fields, right? So these are going to be blank uh, fields that you can come in and create. So you may want to create a text field. Um, you can come in and change the label of that. Text area, this is going to be your multi-line text box. Uh, we already went over that one. Number, uh, the user can only enter in a number. And let's delete some of these. Next we have checkbox. So checkbox is great. Um, you can come in here and you can specify uh, the uh, label up here. And let's see, next we'll do password. So this will just uh, blank out the value as they're typing it. Um, so it's not visible to the person filling out the form. Um, then we also have this opt-in email field. So this allows the user to opt-in to receive your marketing emails. So this would be great for doing an opt-in marketing form. This particular field automatically uh, translates onto the contact. So you'll have this status on here if the user agreed to receive marketing emails or not. Then we have hidden fields. Um, so you can make you know any field a hidden field or you can use this hidden field uh, item. And so you can come in here and set the, the label and you can also set the default value in here. So this may be useful if you're tracking you know, a particular form or source that this came from or other tracking code. Next we have the select. So the select is a drop down. And so the drop down, um, you can come in here and you can customize the choices for your drop down. So you're going to get nothing in here by default, but you can click on edit. And in here, under the data tab, just like we did for the survey, we can start adding some options in here. So this could be like a yes or no drop down. So I can put in yes, no, and maybe. All right, perfect. And I might want to change the name of this. All right, perfect. And now you can see I have my three options in here. So that's really cool. Um, next, we have radio. So we already went over radio. We went over that one. Then we have button. So button, this is like if you accidentally delete the submit button on your form, you can drag this again down here. There are some different styling options for the submit button. You can change the, the color of the, the button, the different themes on here. Um, you can also change the button size and do a larger button. You can even do what's called a block button. So this is going to make it the full width of the screen. This is really useful if you're doing mobile uh, forms, if you anticipate a lot of people filling this out on their mobile device. And you can even add an icon. Now, this one's a little tricky. Uh, you have to know um, a little bit of the, the CSS code on this one. We'll try to make this one easier, but right now you have to type in the, the code for the icon that you want. So this would be like a plus icon right here on the left. Um, and a lot of times there's like some keywords. This one's gear, so it was a gear icon. And you can do something like that on, on either the left or right side. Um, but this one is, is called font 
awesome icon. So if you Google font awesome icons, you can actually get the code for the icon that you want. There's like a directory of icons you can search for. Um, and that's pretty much it on this one. Now you can change the action on here that you want. So by default, the button submit the form, but you can plug in some other uh, advanced features if you want it to post to a specific URL and some of these other ones, which are um, a lot more advanced. Um, we'll try to cover maybe some of that in another video. Um, but let's go ahead and close that out and let's delete some of these fields on here. And so next we have collections and objects. We're not gonna go into those on this video. That one's really uh, advanced, um, but that we went over almost everything on this form designer uh, that you guys can think of. Um, the last thing I wanna close with is gonna be on the settings tab. So make sure you check out the settings tab. On here you can specify the maxed width of your form. So if you didn't notice, this form looks a little wide by default because it's set to extra wide. So I may wanna change that to just wide. Um, and I can also customize the theme of this form. So you can select that from the dropdown. Um, this is helpful if you do not plan on using the form in the web designer. You're only gonna use the form generated link. You can do that. Another advanced thing on here we have, which is really cool, is the async option. So when you're designing that multi-step form like we just did, right, someone may fill out page one and leave on page two. And typically with most form systems out there, if they don't complete the whole form, then you lose it, right? You lost the, the first submission. So this option, which is on by default, will save the partially submitted forms too. So if they fill out page one, abandon page two, you still have that contact info on that first page, which is great. Um, you also have the ability to set a redirect URL after your form is completed. You can redirect them to another form, a thank you page, you know, another website, et cetera. Um, and then we do have the currency setting on here as well. So if you are using the purchase forms, you can change the currency uh, right here on this. And I appreciate you joining me today. This wraps it up for today's video where we went over how you can create conditional forms for your business and also how we went over all the different fields you have available inside the form designer. So it's time you guys go in here, start designing your forms today for your business and also try to start hooking these up to different automation flows. So make sure you check out our other video on creating automation flows. Have a great day. Thank <laughs> you.